Live from NPR News, I'm Jack Spear. As the U.S. COVID-19 death toll reaches another major milestone tonight, 800,000 people dying in the U.S. so far due to the pandemic. According to data compiled by Johns Hopkins, U.S. hospitals are on edge. This is the Omicron variant spreads throughout the country. Infections, meanwhile, are also climbing in Europe and the U.K. And Piers Will Stone has more. Omicron is accelerating much faster than any other variants. Cases are doubling every few days in some parts of Europe. In the United Kingdom, health officials are predicting a tidal wave of cases. Norway predicts it could have hundreds of hospitalizations every day in just a few weeks. The number of people in the hospital so far is still pretty low. But Dr. Marcus Plesha with the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials says it's too early to say what will happen in Europe and the U.S. I think everybody is starting to feel like it would be irresponsible to not raise the alarm now. In New York and New Jersey, the CDC estimates more than 10 percent of coronavirus cases are already Omicron. Will Stone, and PR News. The parents of the student accused of killing four people at Oxford High School in Michigan appeared in court for their probable cause conference. A couple facing involuntary manslaughter charges related to the shooting. From member station WDET, Alex McLennan has more. The preliminary examination is supposed to occur within three weeks of arraignment, but the conference for James and Jennifer Crumbly ended with an agreement to push back the exam. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald says a slow evidence discovery process is the reason for the delay. The prosecutor's office has a lot of work to do with a lot of the the victims and the families, and we do not think it's in their best interest or in the interest of justice to do that during the holiday season. Today's in-person court appearance was the first time the couple have seen each other face-to-face since they were arrested more than a week ago. For NPR News, I'm Alex McLennan in Detroit. The Treasury Department has announced it's releasing $8.7 billion to help increase lending to small and minority-owned businesses and to people living in poor communities with limited access to banking. Stocks close lower as investors wait for the outcome of the Federal Reserve meeting tomorrow. NPR's David Gurr reports. The Nasdaq ended the day down more than a percent. The Dow also ended the day in negative territory, down 0.3 percent. Tuesday started off with new data indicating prices are at their highest in years. The November producer price index is up 9.6 percent from a year ago, the highest since the data was revamped in 2010. Inflation is weighing on the economic recovery, and it's front and center for the Federal Reserve. Chair Jerome Powell is expected to move more aggressively to fight inflation, including potentially by raising interest rates two or three times next year. We'll get an update on Powell's thinking after the Fed ends its two-day meeting on Wednesday. David Gura, NPR News, New York. You're listening to NPR.